I'm Sasiata, I'm a Pokemon ROM hacker, and I'm going to be showing you today how you can change the starters in Pokemon Soul Silver and Heart Gold. Let's get to it. Alright, so to start, we're going to want to know a little bit about how to script in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I have a separate video that's dedicated to getting started with DSPRE, which is this application we'll be using here. If you haven't seen that already, please go check that video out. Uh, it's in the playlist of all my ROM hacking tutorials, so uh, check that out to get you started on scripting, event editing, and text editing. So let's take a look at this event file here, which is the lab where you receive your starter Pokemon normally. So you'll notice when we walk over this tile right here, this trigger, it activates this script 12 in vanilla heart gold. We're going to go look at our script 12, and we're going to come down here, and you'll notice that it starts off this script, and it basically just checks where you are, and it's checking your player position. The part we need to really care about is this jump function 21 right here. And we're going to look at function uh, 21. Well, first of all, it has this player message, 0 and 1, which I've changed in Garbage Gold. And I'm going to be showing you today, uh, basically in Garbage Gold, how I did this. Basically, Professor Elm says, Hi, uh, I've been waiting for you. It's a rough world out there. Here, have a starter Pokemon. And then the end of this, where we um, are going to set these overworld positions to uh, be on the screen, and we're going to immediately give them a movement. And so let me explain to you exactly what I'm doing here. So you'll notice I have these three uh, NPCs over here that are Caterpie, Weedle, and Cricketot, and we're going to be moving them over to about right here in the game. Essentially, we're going to set the overworld position, uh, overworld number seven, and number seven is going to be this Cricketot you can see over here, overworld ID 7, and then we have 5 and 6, so 7, 5, and 6, and these are just their locations on the screen, and so 9, 0, 6, the coordinates on the screen here, and so you can see I have my mouse hovered over these different locations, and you can look in the very bottom left corner of DSP3 and you'll see the global numbers, so 8 and 6 are the two numbers you want to look at, and you'll notice that you have 8 and 6 here, and this middle number is always going to be 0. This is the height coordinate, and it's always 0 in uh, Gen 4 games. And then down is just the direction they're facing. The other thing you're going to want to do when you move these NPCs onto the screen is use these movement commands. And the reason you do that is sometimes these Pokemon will just not uh, appear on the screen if you don't do this. So you'll need to give them a movement command to make them visible. And usually that can just be looking down. So for instance, I have Action 45. Let's take a look at what that is. These are just macros that tell the Pokemon what to do. And it just says to look down. So this doesn't really make them move. Uh, since they're already looking down, but it just makes them visible on the screen. Future Sasyata here. I forgot to say something very important, and you need a wait movement command after these uh, movement uh, assignments. So after every single uh, sequence of movements, you need to have a wait movement before the end, otherwise your game will crash on hardware. And so what's gonna happen is that these Pokemon are going to appear on the screen, and they each have their own associated scripts. And so you'll notice that this Pokemon has script 18, this Pokemon has script 17, and this Pokemon has script 19. So you want to assign each of these Pokemon a script so that when you go and click on them, they'll do something. And that's going to be giving you the starter. So let's take a look at uh, script 17, 18, and 19. And you'll notice they all look pretty similar except they're going to be doing slightly different uh, variable setting. The important part here is figuring out the national Pokédex number of each of these Pokémon. So we're going to want to set this temporary variable, so 0x8004, any of the 80 starting hex variables are going to be temporary variables. So we're going to set this variable equal to 10, and this is going to be, I think, uh, Caterpie's national dex number, I think 13 is Weedle's, and I think 401 is Cricketot's. The way yes no box works is it brings up this new variable called 800c, and it assigns your answer, yes or no, to be either 0 or 1 here. Essentially, the player is going to fill this variable with either 0 or 1, 0 refers to yes, 1 refers to no, and so if this is true, so we're going to call if equal function 28, we're basically going to give the player their starter. Uh, and the important part here is that we've set the specific variable to 10. 
Uh, in these other cases, we're doing the exact same thing. We're just setting this equal to 13 and 401. So we're just keeping track of which Pokemon the player has clicked on. And essentially, if nothing else happens, uh, let's say they say no, then this is not true. And then we're just going to close the touch screen and we're going to need to just end. The structure of function 28 is almost identical to what vanilla would have for the button where you select your Pokemon. You want to create your own function 28 just by going into your event editor, right clicking on this spawnable right here, which is the interactable button that you click when you want to select your starter. And you can take a look at script 13. So let's look at script 13 real quick. So script 13 is going to open up the starter selection screen. We're not going to actually do that. We're going to completely bypass that. But we're also going to want to take all of these different messages and yes and no boxes and sounds and copy them over. The important part of this is the give Pokemon sequence. And so if we want to learn what give Pokemon does and what all these numbers mean, we can just look at this document right here, which is the script command document. And I will link this in the description for you to peruse at your own leisure. And if we look at give Pokemon, then we can scroll down and it says uh, Pokemon level, its item, its form, its ability, and uh, variable is just whether or not it succeeded or not. We're gonna, so we're going to give the Pokemon of the national dex number that we just saved at level 1, and then once we're done with that, we want to remove these three Pokemon sprites off the screen. So once these three guys are in here, uh, we want to eventually remove them by doing the remove overworld command. And then you're going to go through the exact same sequence that you would normally have. And this is just basically copied and pasted from script 13. Everything else is the same. So let's take a look at what this looks like in game. Again, we're going to walk right up to Professor Elm. He's going to talk to us. And like I said before, he's going to attempt to give us our starter Pokemon. And I did some custom scripting so that Silver comes in and takes these Pokemon away, and so he steals them, runs away, and now he has Totodile, Cyndaquil, and Chikorita, and we're left with just a couple bugs. But right here is where the Pokemon overworlds are set to be uh, in these three locations. So we already took a look at that, and now we're going to start clicking on them. So if I click on Weedle, it says choose Weedle, the Beige Wiggler. If I say no, nothing happens. If I click on Caterpie, no, nothing happens. No, nothing happens. Let's say I want Weedle. I'm going to click and say yes. And it's going to remove all three of these Pokemon from the screen and then give me this Weedle. And so, boom, there's Weedle. So great, now we have Weedle and we can talk to it. I also have some custom scripting here where we get some more candies and Ultra Balls and Max Repels. EXP shares. If you want to learn more about how to give items to the player, you can see one of my other uh, scripting videos about that. So that's how you make custom starters in Pokemon. I'm going to copy and paste some of the scripts that I made into the description so you can copy and paste and play around with them rather than having to type them out all yourself. If this video helped you, I'd ask you to subscribe. I'm going to be making more tutorials as always, and please let me know in the description what you'd like me to cover. I have done a lot of ROM hacking stuff, and so if you have any questions about how to do specific things like scripting or mapping or anything, let me know, and I'll try to help you out. See you in the next video.